Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bivy tote bag from Troubadour. And it looks like totes are gaining popularity in the world of carry as of late with companies such as Peak Design, Bellroy, and Moment releasing some interesting tote bag options. And so Troubadour is throwing their hat into the mix with their distinctive style and their solid build quality. We've looked at a few of their backpack options in the past. I've always enjoyed testing their bags out, so I was excited to see what their tote bag would be like. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience testing it over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, the aesthetic here is very similar to some of the other bags that we featured from Troubadour in the past, such as their Apex backpack. So it's a very minimalist, modern, and almost more professional looking aesthetic. This definitely feels like it's gonna work well with a nicer outfit for taking into the office or walking around the city. The tote sort of vibe isn't gonna be for everybody. It's definitely not sort of my preferred look as far as backpacks go. I really loved the Pioneer backpack that we looked at a while back and also the Ridge backpack from Troubadour. So those are more my style, but that's definitely more subjective. And in general, it still feels like a clean look that's gonna be very versatile. As far as the materials, the bag is made out of a recycled polyester that feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage and also offer a decent amount of weather resistance. The bag is fairly lightweight as well. It comes in at a little bit over two pounds. And then you have some very nice YKK zippers all throughout that feel like they're gonna help keep your bag and items safe from the elements. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was excited to see that you have two external water bottle pockets. In one of them, I have the same 20 ounce water bottle that I feature in a lot of my other daily bag videos. It fit in there comfortably. The compartments have some elasticity, so they should be able to handle a thicker water bottle pretty comfortably, or if you wanna play something like a tripod, they are a little bit on the shallow side, so something taller could potentially start to slip out. But for the water bottle that I normally carry, as you saw, it fits comfortably, and I like that the compartments stay flush against the bag when they're not in use to maintain a cleaner overall look. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 21 liters, which is a really nice daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and it didn't feel like the bag was overly packed out. And I liked that even when the bag was a little bit fuller, it still maintained a pretty slim silhouette, which hugged my back nicely and made it great for navigating crowded areas or jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at how you carry the bag, at the top you have these very nice tote style straps. They're super comfortable. They're wrapped in this sort of vegan leather that's also featured on the zipper poles and in a few other places throughout the bag, which just gives it a little bit more of a premium feel. And they've been very comfortable to use for carrying the bag so far. They're fairly thick, well padded. It's nice that when you can grab both handles together, even when it's a little bit more packed out, it never feels like these are digging into your hands or causing any sort of fatigue. And you can open the bag up holding one of the straps and easily reach in and grab whatever you need. The straps also have a pretty good length so that it's not touching the ground necessarily, but it's very easy to get your hands in and out of the tote straps when needed. It's not the type of thing that you might you know, put over your shoulder. I don't think they're quite long enough for that, as we saw with something like the Moment tote bag. Uh, but for the purposes of carrying it in this fashion, it feels like it does a really great job. One thing that I've noticed is that when I'm wearing this as a backpack, the tote straps can kind of tend to flop around a little bit and give the bag a slightly sloppy look. So I do wish that there would have been some way to maybe put them away when not using them. But for actually carrying the bag, they've done a really solid job. And then if you prefer to use the bag as a backpack, you have some pretty comfortable straps here. They offer a decent amount of padding, similar style to the ones that we saw on the Apex backpack from Troubadour. Kind of wish that they had used the same style of straps that we saw in their Pioneer backpack, which I thought were a little bit more comfortable. But again, decent amount of padding here, not a ton of breathability. The straps do have a pretty decent width, so I never felt them really digging into my shoulders when the bag was packed out. Uh, you don't have a sternum strap or really the ability to add one, so I don't think that's a huge deal for a bag of this size, but something worth mentioning. And then down at the bottom, you do have the ability to release this clip here, 
to allow you to tuck the straps away if you don't want to have them out when you're carrying this like a tote bag. So this reminds me of these straps on the packed backpack, very easy to release. And then at the top, you have a little slot where you can tuck the straps away to just give it a cleaner overall look. Moving into the back paneling, it's fairly minimal and simple here. There's not a ton of padding or anything like that. It feels pretty comfortable when you're wearing it as a backpack just due to the size of the bag and the materials used, but there's gonna be no breathability or airflow here. So as you're wearing this for a longer period of time or when the bag is a little bit more heavy, you're gonna feel a lot of sweat start to build up pretty quickly. Before jumping into the organizational options, one thing I wanted to call out is that you do have a nice flat bottom on the bag, which allows it to stand up pretty well on its own, particularly when it's really packed out. So if you're carrying this like a tote bag, you can place it down on the ground next to you, reach in, grab whatever you need. It's a pretty stable bag overall, which is becoming a little bit more rare these days with a backpack. So a nice bonus if that's something that you're looking for in your EDC backpack. And then as far as the organizational options, they do keep things fairly minimal. On the front, you just have a simple quick access pocket it's a little bit more hidden, which I like. It has a well-protected zipper and just gonna be a great spot for any of those items that you need to grab a little bit more easily during the day. So in here, I tossed in my sunglasses with their case. And then I also have a little pouch from Tom Bin that has some of my tech and EDC items. And then the last thing I'll mention while we're in this compartment is that you also have a lanyard with a clip that's gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. Down near the back paneling in one of the water bottle pockets, you have kind of a hidden zipper that's gonna be another sort of quick access compartment that's gonna be more hidden. This is gonna be a good spot to store something sensitive like your passport or cash, maybe a wallet, something a little bit flatter. In my case, I just placed the field notes notebook here to kind of show off the size. Uh, but you know, just nice to have this sort of area that rests against your back to keep your items a little bit safer from pickpockets. And then moving into the main compartment, you have a very well protected zipper here at the top, which is great as if you happen to get caught in some rain, it is definitely gonna fall right on the top here. So good to see that you have some protection. You can open this up and have access into this large bucket of space here. You know, this is gonna be great for handling bulkier items as it's a very simple compartment. It's just a large area of space. Diving into what I currently have in here. First up, I have the Air Slim pouch that has a lot of my EDC and tech items. I also have a GORUCK shadow pocket, which just has some of the bulkier items that I carry with me on my day to day. And then moving down closer to the bottom, I have my Evergood Civic Access pouch, which is my favorite pouch for working remote as I can just put it down next to me at a desk. I'm really just tossing in a lot of pouches in here to show off how much capacity this actually has. Down at the bottom, I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones with their hard shell case. I also have a full size moleskin notebook. And then the last thing that I have kind of resting in here is my Levitate portable standing desk. Now the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. So again, lots of space here, even for bulkier items. I've never used the tote bag as a travel bag, but with the amount of space that's offered here, I could definitely see myself throwing in a packing cube, maybe an extra pair of shoes or a dock kit, and being able to use this for a shorter trip if needed. And then on the inside, you also have some nice organizational options. So on the front of the compartment, you have a mesh zippered pocket which is gonna offer a decent amount of space for any sort of items that you don't want floating all the way down to the bottom of the bag. It also has a decent amount of volume. Make sure you can have a nice view into that. I didn't really put as much stuff into this compartment as most of it is in pouches. I just tossed in a little tin with some band-aids and ointments, and then I also have a deck of playing cards, but plenty of leftover space for other sort of accessories, medicines, toiletries that I would want to toss into here. And then on the back of the compartment, you have an admin style area that's very similar to the layouts that we've seen in some of Troubadour's other bags. So you have some slots down at the bottom that's a little bit more elastic. It's going to be a good spot for something like a mouse. I currently have my Apple Magic mouse and that fit in there comfortably. And then behind that, you have two elastic slip pockets that are fairly deep. I imagine it's gonna be a little bit tricky to see in there with, with the light and just how deep this compartment is. But these are gonna offer enough space to hold something like a portable battery, which is what I currently have here. And then next to that on the other side, you have an almost identical slip pocket 
And in this one, I just place the manicure set that I normally like to have with me. Behind that, you have a zippered pocket that's a little bit larger. In my case, I actually use this to store my tablet as my iPad mini was able to fit in there comfortably. But this is just a great spot to place items that you don't want falling out accidentally, or maybe you could place a notebook in there. So nice amount of space in this compartment. It goes down a little bit deeper and you can zip it up to prevent anything from falling out. And then on the back, you have a well padded and suspended laptop sleeve, which is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Currently what I have here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can see there's plenty of space left over at the top. And so pulling my device out. Now with the sleeve empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No sort of fleece lining. This material on the front does feel a little softer and like it's gonna offer at least some protection against scratching. And I like that this comes up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here comfortably. So nice implementation here with the padding on the sleeve and the fact that it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground and off away from the sides. It feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. So a nice implementation in this main area, some good organizational options offered as well as space really simple minimalist design and if you're interested in a tote style backpack that's going to offer a more professional aesthetic then this is going to be a solid option to consider and so to wrap up it's been a pretty good experience testing out the bivy tote pack over the past couple of weeks and you can currently purchase this on the company site for about 220 dollars which is definitely a bit of an investment the bag is very solidly built. It has a really interesting organizational layout and a unique aesthetic. However, there's gonna be a lot of other great bags in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag that this made me think of is Troubadour's Pioneer Backpack, which we looked at pretty recently and has quickly become one of my favorite EDC and work backpacks. It's just very solidly built. I love the clean aesthetic that it has. It has an excellent organizational layout good laptop protection and has a separate shoe compartment, a really comfortable harness system. I really like how Troubadour has improved the harness on that one. Luggage pastor, it has everything that I would really be looking for out of a great everyday carry bag with an awesome build quality and an upscale aesthetic. So if you're looking for something professional, minimal, that's gonna work well for a professional environment, and you like Troubadour's brand in particular, then that's gonna be one of the best options that you can consider. The next bag this made me think of is the Moment Tote Pack, which is probably the other tote that I have the most familiarity with using. I haven't really tried out a ton of totes in the past, but the Moment Tote Bag actually impressed me with how versatile it was and the amount of space that it offered. It had some great organizational options, a solid build quality. It was much more of a tote bag than this one, which is more of a hybrid. It doesn't have backpack straps, but it you know, just really has a lot of open space in the bag. You can toss a ton of stuff in there. It also combines well with Moments camera accessories. If you want something that's gonna be able to carry your gear, it has a padded laptop sleeve, and you know, it comes in a few different kind of interesting colors. And so if you're looking for something that's gonna be maybe a little bit more tote-like and that and you don't really care about having the backpack straps, then that's gonna be a great option to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Wandered Provoke, which has been one of my favorite camera bags over the past couple of years. And that one has always been very distinctive for its tote bag handles. It's not a tote per se in the way that this one might be, but you do have the ability to hold it and open it and carry it kind of like a tote bag with the handles. It's a top loading bag that's a roll top, so you have a lot of great protection for everything that's on the inside. You also get a little bit of expandability. It does open up clamshell style as well, has a comfortable harness system, good organizational layout, and that is again gonna be one of the best bags that you can use if you have a lot of camera gear that you're hauling around. You're gonna be able to access your camera from the side, keep everything protected. And so if you're looking for something that's more of a backpack style carry that's still gonna offer some of the tote bag functionality and you wanna carry your camera gear safely, then that's gonna be one of the best options to check out. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Bellroy Transit Work Pack, which is again, one of my favorite EDC and work backpacks. It's very solidly built. It has an aesthetic that's fairly sophisticated and minimalistic, similar to Troubadour style. The Transit Work Pack has a clamshell style opening. It comes in at 20 liters, so it's close in size to this. Great laptop protection, one of the best on the market, a nice organizational layout. That one is not a tote bag per se, you know, that's definitely a just pure backpack, but is one of my favorites. It reminds me a lot of Troubadour's brand. And if you're not looking for something that's purely a tote and you just need a durable and versatile bag that it's, you know, gonna be very easy to pack out with the clamshell style opening, that's gonna come in at a similar price range and that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. 
With that being said, the Bivy Tote backpack holds up pretty well against those options. And if you're looking for a hybrid backpack and tote bag that's gonna be very easy to load out, offer a nice organizational layout and a solid build quality, and this is gonna be a great option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Bivy Tote backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular daily bags and tote bags that are currently on the market. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.